I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. May I have a motion to certify closed session, please? Madam Chair, I certify that to the best of each member's knowledge, the Williamsburg James City County School Board, while in closed session, discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as stated in Virginia law, and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening at the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Thank you, Ms. Hombie. Can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. It is great to hear you. I can hear you now. This is wonderful. Thank you. Whoever was responsible for that. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, okay, the next is the Pledge of Allegiance, and tonight we have from Lois Hornsby Middle School, Veronica Armstrong, who's from 8th grade, Cannon, G oh, Cannon John, also from 8th grade, and Tate Lee, uh, also 8th grade. Can you all come up and lead us in the pledge, please? Whenever you're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you both. Professor, will you call the roll, please? Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Ms. Ownby. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. May I please have a motion to approve the agenda? Madam Chair, I move approval agenda is presented. Thank you. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. The agenda is approved. Next on the uh, agenda is announcements and superintendent's reports. Dr. Heron. Good evening, Madam Chair. To help our students begin with the end in mind, many of our elementary school counselors have organized college campus tours for fifth grade classes this year. Laurel Lane's elementary school's fifth grade students visited Christopher Newport University recently, where they took a tour of the campus checked out dorm rooms, and even had the opportunity to eat in the dining hall. The, t the trip was funded in part by a $700 Target field trip grant and coordinated by Laurel Lane School Counselor Amy Meister. Academic and Career Planning is a K-12 initiative in WJCC schools, and this is just one way we are helping our students learn about options for their futures. <coughs> Congratulations to Hornsby Middle School student, uh, student Peter Rodovich for winning a, na a nationwide German spelling and vocabulary competition, competing against 555 other middle and high school German students. Peter started preparing for this competition last December by memorizing the meaning and spelling of nearly 1,000 words. Peter worked through all 50 rounds of the competition in just two and a half hours literally setting a record for the competition. Three Berkeley Middle School students also placed in this competition in Spanish. Daniel Pham placed second, and Numai placed 10th, and Larissa Smart placed ninth in German. Congratulations to all of these students. JBB Blayton teacher Kellyanne Kelly was recently named as the local and district smart mayor veterans of foreign wars National Citizenship Education Teacher of the Year. The contest recognizes exceptional teachers for their commitment to teaching citizenship. Congratulations uh, to Ms. Kelly. And finally, Jamestown High School teacher Molly Sandlane has been selected to attend the Summer Institute at Duke University on dimensions of the Middle East, foundations, cultures, and geopolitics. Sandling was selected for this all expenses paid professional development opportunity by Duke University's Islamic, Islamic Studies and Middle East Studies Centers and the Guitar Foundation International. 
Ms. Sandlin is a National Board Certified Teacher and a leader on the Jamestown High staff. Congratulations, <laughs> Sandlin. These are all of the announcements I have this evening. Thank you, Dr. Heron. Does anyone have anything else? Okay. Just Dr. Heron, uh, not to put you on the spot, but today I believe you were a presenter in a statewide conference or session about equity. Um, I took part in a superintendents and board member panel on the subject of, of equity. It was an equity hot topic conference uh, with the Virginia School Board Association. So that was a lot of fun taking part in that. Thank you for, your, thank you for doing that and sharing what you, what you know about the topic with the rest of Virginia. That brings us next to board recognitions. Good evening, Madam Chair, again. We have a number of individuals to recognize tonight. Let's begin by congratulating the Jamestown Girls Swim Team for being named the 2017-18 VHSL 4A Girls State Champions. This is the team's fifth consecutive year earning this title. I'd like to invite head coach Molly Sandling to come down to the podium to announce the team members. Students, as your name is called, please come forward and remain for a group photograph. Ashley Adams, Hallie Anderson, Shay Bruski, Catherine Burroughs, Kaylee Carvajal, Savannah Champagne, Rebecca Dunkusky, Haley Downer, Katie Duff, Katrina Early, Victoria Hardy, Brooke Harlow, Kylie Johnson, Abby Larson. Abby Larson was also the individual state champion in the 50 freestyle and the 100 freestyle. Audrey Lurs, Madeline Lurs, Rory Meadows, Madison Nuremberg, Caitlin Pegram, Midori Pitts, Abby Polanski, Emma Rice, Carter Catherine Relay, Lily Sines, Anna Song, Angelique Vo, Meredith White, Bridget Wilson, and Emily Zuniga. Awesome job, ladies. Well done. <laughs> Four members of the Lafayette Girls Swim Team were named 4A state champions for the 200 medley relay. Students, as your name is called, please join us up front to receive your certificate and remain for a group photograph. Colby Hurt, also 200 individual medley. Sophia Long. Grace Olson. And Kelly Shiza. Congratulations to our coach as well. Virginia Elementary Chorus provides an opportunity for students across the state to work with a master conductor 
perform a varied repertoire of quality choral literature and increase their knowledge of vocal skills. Seven Clara Bird Baker choir students were selected to participate in this outstanding statewide event. I'd like to ask CBB music teacher Jason Kreiner to come to the podium to announce the CBB students. Uh, Mr. Kreiner is also the CBB Teacher of the Year this year, if I remember, from last year, last week. Lee Jobes, Brandon Dubois, Addison Zekman, Jaysa Mims, and Maya Blackhurst. We have two that were not able to be with us tonight, Sasha Ryan Polk and Brighter Thompson. The Center for Digital Education has just awarded WJCC Schools Technology Department with the Digital Schools District Survey Award for their outstanding work investing in tools for the next generation of digital learners. This national award recognizes school districts and school boards that exhibit exemplary use of technology in education, as well as transparency and efficiency in operations. <coughs> The top 10 rankings are awarded to the school divisions that most fully implement technology bench benchmarks in the ev evolution of digital education. Uh, Brian Landers has already joined us up front to receive the award uh, for the work of the technology department. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Landers. WJCC's support positions are an integral part of the school division's success. This evening we are honoured to recognise these excellent staff through the Support Employee of the Year Recognition Programme. One support employee from each school and non-based department was selected by their peers and colleagues. We appreciate these employees' commitment to our schools, departments and most importantly to our students. Employees, as your name is called, please come up front and be recognized and remain until all employees have been named. From Bright Beginnings, Support Employee of the Year, Tracy Dumpy. <clears throat> Clara Bird Baker, Support Employee of the, of the Year, Paddy Trubenbach. DJ Montague, Support Employee of the Year, Jennifer Damien. <clears throat> J. Blaine Blayton, Support Employee of the Year, Sarah Pittman. <clears throat> James River, Support Employee of the Year, Holly Blyken. <clears throat> Laurel Lane, Support Employee of the Year, Candice Breshnahan. <clears throat> Atoka, Support Employee of the Year, 
Linda Jacard. Matthew Whaley, Support Employee of the Year, Elizabeth Wells. Norge, Support Employee of the Year, Barbara Tui. Stonehouse, Employee of the Year, Laurie Hudson. Berkeley Support Employee of the Year, Visa Carter. Lois S. Hornsby Support Employee of the Year, Gwendolyn Gaines. Tuano Support Employee of the Year, William Quintana. Jamestown Support Employee of the Year, David Greenhigh. <laughs> Lafayette Support Employee of the Year, William Capers. Warhill Support Employee of the Year, Ethel White. <laughs> Central Office Support Employee of the Year, Caitlin Wisenant. Operation Support Employee of the Year, Tammy Flowers. <laughs> Technology Support Employee of the Year, Anne Skipper. And Transportation Support Employee of the Year, Billy Estes. Rhonda, you need to get on the front. All right, with our people. Oh, she called you out, Rhonda.
We are very fortunate to have such wonderful employees in WJCC schools and want to thank everybody again for the incredible work that they do. Um, obviously, Madam Chair, that concludes our uh, recognitions this evening and we look forward to more in May. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hare. And that brings us next to School Spotlight. Lois Hornsby, would you like to introduce the presentation, please? Oh, I forgot to do it. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce Dr. Ellison from Hornsby Middle School, who's going to introduce their School Spotlight. Thank you, Dr. Ellison. Hi. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school board, and Dr. Heron. Hornsby Middle School is pleased and proud to present the April School Spotlight, focusing in on the Hawk News. The Hawk News is a weekly video newscast created by and presented by our students each week, showcasing all the amazing things we do at Hornsby. I'm Tate. I'm Ronnie. And I'm Cannon. And, and we, we are the Hawk Newscasters. We have a compilation video that captures what Hornsby is all about. Hornsby welcomes new students through orientations and the flight crew, which is where two students in each class who make new, uh, sure new students has someone in each class they, uh, they can ask questions. Hornsby believes in and recognizes our students through pep rallies, brag boards, soaring hawks, positive referrals, and shout outs. Hornsby also has engaging and collaborative student-centered learning. Hornsby students are talented, fun, and care about the community. This includes service classes such as peer helpers and B-Crew, and student-selected causes like a food drive and building walls in Sedan. school year has officially begun. It looks like everyone has adjusted well to their new grade level, and by this time, everyone should be enjoying their one-to-one -one laptops. It's so nice to have a dependable laptop to complete all your schoolwork. A special welcome to the sixth grade Hawks. You definitely look like you have made Hornsby your home. Hard to believe that about two weeks ago you went through your orientation. Remember that. Especially new students and sixth graders. You think we should tell them? I have a better idea. They should tell them. Watch this. What does it take to be a soaring hawk? A soaring hawk is a student that has excellent grades in all four of their core classes and excellent behavior in all their four classes. It has to be agreed upon by all four of their core teachers. Now that you know what a soaring hawk is, you too can be a soaring hawk. Shout out to anyone! 
Hornsby is a great school to be in, and everyone deserves a shout out. Here are the Hawks shout outs for this week. And now, a special treat from Miss Moore students who have recorded a song about the European explorers. Here they are. I say cabbage, you say England, for a dollar, for Spain. All we want is independence, because in Parliament we have no attendance. We don't want to be taxed after the war we fought. We had no wishes except for the freedom we sought. So against these awful rules we protest, and all your horrid laws we detest. You can't have independence. You're still part of England. But I want you to know I have been thinking. If you were on your own, just the colonies, you would die out in large quantities. You think you can do it all on your own, but I am your ruler up on this throne. tries to navigate through the issues that could be faced um, in the 1800s, and it's her surviving her issues with three sisters and her family by her side. Wait, can I play Star Wars? <laughs> People are facing low-income poverty in our community. How can Hornsby students help? Well, if each student donates $2, we will raise more than $1,800. What will happen at the pep rally? Well, students will use the coins to donate to vote for a teacher of their choice to get pied in the face at the pep rally. That sounds pretty hilarious, right? Hello, Hawks. We hope everyone had a great weekend and is looking forward to next week, especially because it's Hornsby's Unity Week, and we can't wait to celebrate. Unity Week is all about kindness, acceptance, and inclusion, and standing together against bullying. So get in the spirit and be a good character on Monday. Be positive on Tuesday, wear orange on Wednesday, be a team player on Thursday, and a soaring hawk on Friday for a pep rally. share some of the, of the things that make Hornsby great. Above, Above all, Hornsby, Hornsby has heart. heart. Thank you all for your presentation. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Mr. Kelly? I just thought, I thought that was wonderful. I appreciate uh, you coming and uh, the unity that that must, must create to your school and uh, the sense Um, well, all of our schools are wonderful, but I, Hornsby has a special place in my heart since my oldest, who's 21, opened Hornsby as an eighth grader. And I have a sixth grader there now and an eighth grader. So thanks for all that you do. Hornsby is a great, a great place. And I love that all of our students soar every day. 
And we thank you very much for coming here. It was wonderful to learn about the Hawk News, and hopefully I can be there one morning when you produce it. Is it uh, a, so it's once a week on the... Friday. On, yeah, on... Friday. Yeah, great. All right, well, I'll try to make it there Friday morning uh, sometime soon so I can see it. Right, thank you. Thank you. Citizen comments, and we have two speaker cards this evening. Ms. Hummel, would you like to make some remarks? Yes, because these two speakers need these <laughs> remarks. Um, this is the time when citizens who have submitted speaker cards are invited to address the board. Speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their name for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. Each speaker is allocated three minutes. Time cannot be yielded to another speaker. Personnel matters are not discussed in open school board meetings, and we ask that you refrain from making reference to specific individuals. The board is interested in hearing all comments fully and requests that citizens refrain from verbal outbursts, applause, or any other type of demonstration. Although the board does not respond to comments at this time, please know that we are listening and we appreciate your time. Thanks for adhering to these guidelines. Madam Chair, my directions are concluded. Thank you, Ms. Hummel. Ruth Larson. First of all, I was doing fine, um, even though it was an emotional night for me because it's my daughter's last recognition until the Hornsby, and uh, it took me back to sixth grade real quick for both my girls. So I want to thank both of you, um, all of you, for having me speak this evening. And I can't get specific, but I'm gonna, I am gonna get a little specific, and I want to speak about swim and dive. And um, I don't come to you lightly because I realize that what I'm about to say is something that I'm going to have to take responsibility for as we move ahead, but it's very important to me. And so earlier this evening, you recognized the Jamestown swim team that is led by Coach Sandlin and Coach Wigan. And I specifically want to recognize Coach Sandlin for just a moment, going back to 2004 5 when she started coaching Jamestown swim. And she has had four boys state championships and six state championships for girls, along with numerous region, district, et cetera. She's also been the 2014 Mideast, Mideast Region Coach of the Year for Boys Swim and Dive, 2015 Virginia State Coach of the Year, Boys Swim and Dive, 2017 Mideast Region Coach of the Year, Girls Swim and Dive. And so, as you can see, this has been a very successful program and as, as well for Lafayette with um, Coach Baker and Warhill as, as they prog progressed as well. Uh, last year, I wrote to you saying before you add another sports team that being recognized, please remember those that you have. And so, as my daughter gets ready to exit what has been a very successful program, not in wins necessarily or only, but in what they've learned from Coach Sandling um, about character and what they have had to deal with as far as facilities go. Because for years they were practicing in a pool that did not allow them to dive in. And so it would be equivalent to I know several of your, some of you have children that do soccer, volleyball, et cetera. So imagine practicing volleyball without a ball or soccer without a goal. And so this team, in spite of, and, and really all three teams, in spite of being at a disadvantage, worked hard and, and were able to succeed. Um, thankfully, WISC opened up uh, a facility this year, and with the 757 Year-Round Swim Club's commitment to hold practice there, um, became a practice where two of our high schools were able to practice. But if we had not had that, Hampton University was where all of our home meets, which basically all the meets for the Bay, Bay River District were held. And, oh, I'm on yellow already. And um, we lost that this year. And I don't know if we would have had WISC what we would have done. So I'm going to run out of time. But I just ask you to please let's work together and make sure that we provide proper facilities moving ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Larson. Kim Hunley. <laughs> Good evening. Kim Hunley, president of the WJCEA. Um, so here's a scoop. I know you can't respond, but um, 
you have before you um, some ice cream trivia from Baskin Robbins. And just with a show of hands, do you know, is there any of you that know why there are 31 flavors? I'm just curious, okay? Do you know the flavor of the ice cream named after one of the Beatles? The Beatles? No? Okay, so you have 31 facts there. I will be quizzing you next month, and I'm going to report your results on the Gazette. <laughs> just kidding. But in, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But our children are getting ready to go into testing. Our teachers are just preparing kids very well. And it can be a time of excitement, but also anxiety. So whatever you can do, to just send up happy thoughts to them and prayers, if uh, prayer is your thing, just so that you know these next days will um, be positive because you know the saying ice cream you scream everybody scream for ice cream we will have a big celebration and I know that our students are going to do well but the reason why there is 31 flavors it's for one flavor for each day of the month even though some months are 30 there's 31 but starting now until the middle of May you know a lot of our children will be testing so um, just keep that in mind and I will get my yours is it fell somewhere but you know I would never forget my fearless leader so um, but anyway look over those facts and think about that too when you're looking at these things and trying to remember how difficult it is for some kids and how easy some of you will be able to do that like that some of you will need hands-on um, you know problem-based learning to get those facts across. So just think about that. And thank you so much for the um, meetings that are going across, uh, the strategic plan meeting, planning meetings. Uh, the budget is ready to come forth and back. And before you know it, it is going to be summer, and we can relax. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Huntley. I think we may need a field trip to Baskin-Robbins just so we can enhance our learning. Get ready for next month. All right, that brings us to the consent agenda. All right, item 7.01, approval of minutes from the following meetings, March 16, 2018, March 20, 2018. 7.02, financial report and monthly bills and payroll for March 2018. 7.03, personnel actions as presented. 7.04, resolution R1218, National Teacher Appreciation Week. 7.05, Resolution R1318, School Nutrition Employee Appreciation Week. Item 7.06, Resolution R1418, National School Nurse Day. 7.07, Resolution R1518, Berkeley High School Class of 1968. 7.08, revise and recode policy JIHA search and seizure, seizure to policy JFG search and seizure. 7.09, retire policy IIBE instructional television. 7.10, uh, add new policy IGAK alternatives to animal dissection. 7.11, retire policy EGAFA, cellular and personal communication services telephone usage. 7.12, revise policy IIBA slash GAB, acceptable technology system use policy. 7.13, revise policy GBI, staff gifts and solicitations. 7.14, review policy GBO, Virginia retirement system. 7.15, review policy GCBCA Employee Assistance Program, and 7.16 Appointments to 21st Century and Career Ready Advisory Committee. May I please have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. I have a second, please. Second. Are there any comments? Mrs. Young, would you like to say anything? I uh, just want to congratulate the two people that have been selected to work on the 21st Century and Career Ready Advisor. Advisory Chris Moore and um, Mr. Schaefer. And both of these people have had a lot to do with uh, CTE over the years, and they'll be a great asset, I believe, to that committee. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, with that, it's been moved, and the consent agenda has been uh, moved and seconded. Sirza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Ms. Ownby? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. The consent agenda passes. Um, before we move on to action items, I'd like to just uh, express my appreciation to the two citizens who um, 
offer to serve on our uh, advisory committee. And then I also would like to just uh, thank staff for the information about the several resolutions that we passed today. It's nice to know that not only we're passing resolutions, but what the division is doing uh, in response to those resolutions. So thank you. All right, that brings us to 8.01, local special education plan and Title VI B flow through funds. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move approval of the special education plan, annual plan and the Title VI B flow through funds. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Can I have a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. The motion passes. 8.02 Carl D. Perkins grant. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move the approval of the local plan and budget of CTE, the Carl D. Perkins grant, for school year 2018 to 2019. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. 8.03, middle school refresh laptop purchase. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the purchase request for middle school 1.1 laptops from Lenovo in the amount of $326,436 through contract Virginia-140331-LEN. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Zone B. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. 8.04 Laptop Protection Services purchase. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we approve purchase requests for laptop protection services from Lenovo, Lenovo in the amount of $116,640 through contract number VA-140331-. L -E -N. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. 8.05 James Blair Middle School Audio Visual Systems Purchase. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move approval of the purchase request for classroom, gym, and auditorium items to support James Blair Middle School in the amount of $370,947 through the division purchasing contract number 15-6784 with Optech. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, will you call the roll, Ms. Serza, please? Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. 8.06, award a contract for invitation for bid number 18-12166, Clara Bird Baker Elementary School Exterior Improvements. May I please have a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we award a contract for invitation for bid 18-12166, Clara Bird Baker Elementary School Exterior Improvements to Eastern Waterproofing in the amount of 234 234,431. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? Um, Madam Chair, Mr. Snipes is going to speak to the fact that the amount uh, that we're voting on is much less than the original cost of the project and give us some background on that. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, school board chair, school board members, Dr. Heron. Um, as Dr. Heron mentioned, the original uh, estimate from RRMM was in the amount of $1.3 million to replace um, and to do some exterior masonry repairs. The, they re-looked at the scope and pared it down to say that we do not need to replace all the exterior masonry. So that is one reason, the largest region, reason why this is reduced um, in the amount of about $1.1 million. 
Any questions for Mr. Snipes on that? That was the exact question I had. Was why the numbers are so different. So, thank you. Madam Chair, I'm going to ask Mr. Snipes to stay for the next one once we're ready. Thank you. Okay, great. So let us, any other questions or comments? It's been moved and seconded. Ms. Serza, will you call the roll? Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. All right, the motion passes. That brings us to 8.07, award a contract for invitation for bid 18-12119, Jamestown High School HVAC system replacement. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move award a contract for invitation for bid 18 Dash one two one one nine Jamestown High School HVA system replacement to Warwick Mechanical in the amount of six million four hundred ninety-five thousand, contingent upon budget approval. May I have a second, please? Second. All right. Um, moved and seconded. Dr. Heron, Mr. Snipes. Mr. Snipes is going to provide some background because there's a quite a difference in the price on the budget of mind on this this project as well. That is correct. Um, we asked our vendor who performed the. Uh, original design why the cost uh, estimate of 5.6 million about 5 million five hundred eighty thousand was way under what the bid came in as and when I say way it's, it came in under about eight hundred thousand dollars less his response and I quote is the design team is being informed by their equipment manufacturers that an increase in steel pricing is fixed is uh, forcing them to raise their prices so when this was originally designed back in um, we gave the design to them in October um, of last year. Um, steel prices were not where they were. Um, they were basing their, most of the time their estimates are coming in now based on the fear that steel prices will rise. Any questions for Mr. Snipes? So what's the difference between, again? The uh, budgeted amount was, uh, that we have left in the budget is 5580000 and you are voting tonight to award to work mechanical in the amount of $6,495,000. And that's contingent on? That's contingent upon budget approval. So where's the budget? Is that the rest of the, the capital numbers that we all talk about every year? Ms. Barnes will come up and, and speak to that, but basically we would be asking permission to use funds from other, left over from other projects to go towards this essential project. Obviously in the one that Mr. Snipes just spoke, had spoken about just prior to this, we saved money, but in this one it's much more, Ms. Barnes. Good evening, Dr. Heron, um, Madam Chair, and other board members. Yes, that, that, that's true. We, we actually checked with the county and the city to see our uh, balances that we have in other CIP pro pro projects. So we'll have the remaining and we'll request to use those funds for this project so to that, make the difference. So that comes from the Board of Supervisors? Yes, sir. So it's not action upon, of this body, it's action of, of the supervisors well, in the city? Our fund of balance. course, this is in the fiscal year of 2019 CIP anyway. So we've got to get that approved and then we have to request um, the use of the additional funds from previous okay. projects. So this is that's our fund balance, right? Is that what we call? Yeah, okay. Just this is coming in time to allow the work to begin, but it's all contingent upon approval by our funding partners. So do we have a timeline for when that will be approved? They will approve their budget on May the 8th, and we can check with uh, staff the day after. So Warwick Mechanical doesn't proceed until later, May 9th. And for how long is this price good? Um, Warwick Mechanical um, was informed by our purchasing that the money is good until July 1, basically, because we'll be approving the budget at that. But they will proceed as if their money is available. They understand there's lead times on certain items, so they, are, they will wait until the notice of intent. But they will be able to do it if we are approved. I assume steel prices are higher because of what's going on in the international they did not give a reason why. They just said they were hearing from their manufacturer that's forcing them to raise the prices on steel. They didn't give. Huh? Well, does it work the other way if all of a sudden steel prices drop to? Well, if you look at what we just did with Laurel Lane, you remember a couple of weeks ago, that budget came in 2.4 million. However, um, 
uh, that bid came in at 2.4 million, however, our budget was $4 million. So we came in $1.6 million less, but because you can make some assumptions there about what happened between the last two months, but. Any other comments or questions? Moved and seconded. Ms. Serza, will you call the roll, please? Ms. Ownby. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. That brings us to 8.08. Award a contract for invitation for bid 18 dash 12136 Stonehouse Elementary School bus canopy construction. May I have a motion, please? Madam Chair, I move that we award a contract for invitation for bid number 18-12136 Stonehouse Elementary School bus canopy construction to David A. Nice Builders in the amount of $295,900. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments from staff or questions for staff? or comments from board members? I will, I will make the comment that we have talked with David Nice and they their original estimate was much higher than this. We've worked with them to pare that down. Um, however, we'll still have a, uh, a canopy that is um, conducive to allowing the students in. Ms. White at the principal at Stonehouse has agreed to the, the new design. Questions or comments? Oh, what did they do exactly to reduce the price? They redu they reduced part of the square footage for the canopy um, from about 4,800 square feet to 3,600 square feet. Cut, they cut down on some of the um, price of the Anything else? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Ms. Sosa, will you call the roll, please? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Ms. Ownby. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Motion passes. That brings us to board member comments. Dr. Beers, do you have anything to share tonight? Sorry? It's the board member comments. Do you have anything to comment oh, on? Oh, sorry. I was, I was pu pulling up the comments that I was going to make. Just a minute. <laughs> I'm starting to take notes as we, uh, as we have them. Uh, first of all, I would uh, uh, I would very much like to uh, congratulate our elementary, middle, and high school winners, students, our technology leader winner, um, all the employees of the year and um, um, an additional staff. And I was um, very much impressed with the um, Hornsby Middle School presentation. And all I can really say is go Hawks. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. First, uh, I went to the um, the uh, Jamestown musical Big Fish last weekend, and uh, as always, I'm very impressed with our with our uh, students at all three of the high schools, and I very much enjoyed that presentation, and uh, um, it, they're always just amazing. And Lafayette's is this week. Lafayette's what was? Mary Poppins. Poppins, of course, right? So I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Uh, last Friday night, I was I was fortunate enough to attend the VFW Community Awards night. Um, several uh, members of our uh, community were recogni recognized there, um, firefighters and police officers. But uh, we had uh, several students who uh, essay contests. Um, uh, Mr. Stone actually won the high school teacher of the year from Jamestown, and um, there were a couple of uh, Boy Scouts there. So that I was uh, very much impressed with that program and very uh, thankful for the. Uh, for the VFW recognition of our uh, students and staff. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mrs. Young? Uh, I just want to second the comments that Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Beers made about congratulating Mr. Landers. Thank you very much. I, I know it's largely through the efforts of, of our staff that so much is accomplished, so thank you very much and I um, appreciate it very much. Uh, I want to um, support, for the support employees, I'm, uh, I don't think no matter what we do, it's never enough, but I want to congratulate the ones that were chosen for Employees of the Year. And I want to give a specific shout out to Mr. Stone for uh, his production of uh, Big Fish. Um, I was totally impressed. Uh, the two male leads uh, uh, were outstanding, and if you, didn't, if you didn't go, you missed it. 
and it's too, that's very sad, really. You, you missed something that was totally amazing. Um, and then I want to hope that you'll go see Mary Poppins, because I'm looking forward to see how they're going to make her fly away <laughs> <laughs> so, with her umbrella. So uh, that's uh, Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, the performances are at 7 o'clock at night, and there's a matinee on Saturday at 2. So please plan on going, and if you're in our community, um, you, you will love it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Young. Ms. Mrs. Taylor? Um, another quick congratulations to everyone who was recognized tonight. So many great things going on in our district, as evidenced by the large number of people that we were able to recognize. So that's always wonderful. Ms. Hi. My uh, other fellow board chair or board members said everything I was going to say. But I would like to add that I appreciate the people who remain here to the bitter end <laughs> with us. So thank you all for still being in your seats and listening to our comments. Ms. Ombi. Yes, I had an opportunity to attend the parent forum for the strategic plan last Wednesday at Jamestown and appreciate the community's thoughtful input um, in that process. Also attended a special education advisory committee meeting last Thursday um, where the committee is looking forward to serving as an advocate for K-12, um, in particular with regard to educating our community about the needs of students with disabilities and, and, the, and the, the need for funding um, at the local, state, and federal level. Um, they're hoping to be able to utilize Peach Jar more, more, um, so that they can sh share resources um, to families, but also um, folks within the division about um, special educational um, activities and um, resources for families. And they also have discovered that while there's a Facebook page that was created years ago, they don't have access to it. So they need to dismantle that Facebook page. We'll create a new Facebook page, again, um, in efforts to bring awareness to the Special Education Advisory Committee. Um, and so between now and next month, they will begin working on the annual report to our board on um, the, the needs for um, uh, special education services in the division. I too attended Big Fish and it was, it was the bomb. It's great, it was phenomenal. And I'm looking forward to, to Mary Poppins. Um, and want to congratulate all of our support staff and I'm glad that we have an opportunity to um, applaud them. So, and Mr. Landers, Mr. Landers as well. Thank you. I wanted to um, share that Dr. Heron and Mr. Baker and I uh, and, and Ronnie, went around to the three uh, schools, elementary, middle, and high, to, um, to celebrate those level teacher of the year. And that was really fun to walk around. It's, you're quite a spectacle walking around with balloons. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it was really a fun thing. And I'm looking forward to the, to the reception um, coming up. And then I also wanted to thank Ms. Larson for her remarks. And at, at, I will take them to heart. But she is right that they will come back to her at some point. Because we, you know, if that's something that Dr. Heron's team, as they look at long-range planning for facilities, um, may indeed be part of that. Um, and I also want to take a few moments. Um, I'm sorry, I know everybody wants to get out of here, but I think this is pretty important. So I want to talk a few uh, minutes about funding. Um, I wanted to do this at the last meeting, but because the state budget was in flux, it, it, it's kind of a difficult thing and a complicated thing to talk about. But, but I think it's important. Um, and I'd like to thank City Council for their commitment to funding to full-time SROs at James Blair and at Berkeley. They stated that they would they would figure that out in their budget next year, so I'm grateful for that. I also would like to thank uh, Interim County Administrator Bill Porter for recommending to his board that they fully fund Dr. Heron's proposed uh, WJCC operating budget. This year's uh, proposal included a much needed uh, increase in pay for our most important assets, our, our employees. And it was a significant increase this year, and I'm pleased and grateful that Mr. Porter concurred with Dr. Heron on the budget, and I hope that our funding localities consider his recommendation favorably. Uh, additionally, his recommended fiscal year uh, 19 CIP budget includes investing in more security measures in our schools, for which I am also grateful. Uh, but in addition to thanking the localities for their support of public education, I'd like to ask uh, for help from my colleagues and from the citizens of this community it's the school board's job to ensure adequate resources and support of public education, and it's arguably one of our most important jobs. Um, we are charged with securing those resources during challenging times. And at the joint meeting last month, our guest speaker, Mr. Regenbaugh, clearly demonstrated 
that the state is not funding public education appropriately. He also clearly demonstrated that local revenue is not keeping pace with local population growth. The situation is not sustainable and something's got to give. The General Assembly recently enacted legis or passed legislation that will increase revenue significantly in James City County. Senator Norman introduced the legislation under the mantra of self-help at the local level because the state is not sufficiently supporting the localities. The new legislation will generate revenue locally that we can spend locally, and in my view, this community should invest the new revenue in support of education. There is no shortage of thoughtful and justifiable ways the community can invest in education. We can invest in much needed elementary and high school classroom space. We can invest in our staff by continuing to support higher pay in an era of teacher shortages. We could hire more staff to lower class size. We can invest in more innovative programs, programs that we've already had to adjust next year because of resources. And we can invest in workforce housing that would allow our employees to live in the community they so ably serve. With that in mind, the James City County Board of Supervisors needs to hear from you if you want them to invest the new revenue in education. They need to hear from individuals and organizations that support education as part of their mission. They need to hear that it's more important to invest in education than to lower the property tax rate. I will reach out to the Education Association to ask them to share this message with their members. I will reach out to the PTAs to ask them to advocate for funding education not only this year, but in the future. We heard from many citizens during the redistricting process who were upset that our high schools were so full. This is an opportunity for them to share their thoughts with the Board of Supervisors to ask them to spend this new additional revenue on educational infrastructure instead of a tax decrease. I will contact those citizens as well. Everyone who cares about education in this community knows this division needs more resources in order to continue our good work. And I encourage everyone who believes that to please let your elected leaders know how you feel. We have been given a once in a generation opportunity by the General Assembly to recover from the recession. We have been given the opportunity for self-help that we so desperately need. It is too important to not act. I encourage you to share your thoughts with your elected officials. So that was a lot, so if anybody else wants to add anything, please feel free. All right. Hearing nothing, that moves to upcoming events, 10.01. On April 25th at 8.15 a.m., the Policy Committee will meet in the annex, uh, room 309 of the Annex at the School Board and Central Office. The 21st Century and Career Ready Advisory Committee will meet on the 25th of April at 3.30 p.m. in room 309 in the Annex at the School Board and Central Office. And the Teacher of the Year reception is also on the 25th of April at 5.15 in the Motoka, Wood rooms, Motoka Woods room of the School of Education. And then upcoming meetings, we have a closed session on May 8th at 6 p.m. at the Annex at the School Board and Central Office, at, followed by a work session <clears throat> also on May 8th at 6.30 in the Annex. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then on the 15th of May, we have a closed session at 6 p.m. Um, on Mounts Bay Road here in uh, Building F, followed by a regular meeting at 6.30 in Building F. Um, it's possible that both the May meetings may start earlier um, because of the annual evaluation process of the superintendent, but we will post that publicly and let you know. And hearing if there's nothing else, this meeting is adjourned.